In this video, we're going to be talking about the concept of close packing. We're going to be answering the question, what is the most efficient way to pack hard spheres in three dimensions? Imagine a billiard ball. Now, imagine placing a second billiard ball right next to it, just touching. These billiard balls are models representing atoms, ions, or molecules in a crystal structure. They are only good models for atoms, ions, and molecules that are relatively hard and can't be deformed easily. Our goal here is to place these billiard balls as close to one another as possible, taking up as little space as possible. The first row is easy. We just simply place the billiard balls in a row, touching one another. The question now becomes, how do we place the second row? Let's try placing a second row directly under the first row, such that all of the balls are aligned vertically with one another. Notice the large amount of empty space that is left using this orientation. There are large square holes, large volumes of space left over unused. There is a better way of placing the second row, a more space efficient way. Each sphere in the second row occupies the indent created by two spheres sitting side by side in the first row. This uses significantly less space. We can pack more spheres into a smaller amount of space. This is close packing of two rows. Notice that the empty space left between the rows is significantly smaller. These are now triangular shaped holes. Okay, let's create our first layer of close packed spheres. This is the most space efficient way to pack hard spheres in a two dimensional layer. Think for example of packing a series of golf balls in the bottom of a cardboard box. Notice the hexagonal shapes created by the positions of the hard spheres. This is a feature of close packing of a two-dimensional layer. It's kind of like a honeycomb. In fact, it's directly related to a honeycomb. When bees deposit wax, it's as circular columns close packed with one another. The wax shrinks and creates the familiar hexagonal honeycomb shape. Okay, now we want to start packing in three dimensions. We want to put a layer of hard spheres on top of our first layer. So how do we go about doing this? A sphere placed on top of our first layer will naturally find its way to sitting in a triangular hole. This is a divot created by the first layer. Let's have a look at it from another angle. While we could have placed the blue sphere anywhere we wanted on the surface, we are now limited as to where we can place a second blue sphere. There are certain triangular holes that we cannot occupy with a second sphere simply because part of the space is already occupied by the original blue sphere. What this means is that when we put one sphere down, this now dictates where the rest of the layer must sit. The blue layer, just like the red layer, now creates triangular holes. However, there are actually two types of triangular holes. Looking down through the layers from the perspective we're looking right now, you can see that through some of the triangular holes, you can look all the way through the structure, right through the triangular holes in the red layer underneath. Through some of the triangular holes, you can see a red sphere sitting directly underneath. Let's shift the structure around just so we can have a look at this. One last thing to note is that had we placed the first blue sphere in a different position, it might have shifted the entire blue layer with respect to the red layer. But ultimately the geometry doesn't change. It really doesn't matter where we placed the first blue sphere. Now let's start placing the third layer. Remember that there are two different types of triangular holes created by the second layer. It matters which one we choose. First, let's choose a triangular hole that is directly over top of the red spheres in layer one. 
I'm coloring the spheres in layer 3 the same color, red, as in layer 1, because they are in the same position vertically. Now that we have selected our first position, we can grow in the rest of the layer. Let's rotate these layers so we can see them from a different angle. We can keep filling in layers above and below to create a three-dimensional structure. This type of three-dimensional close packing structure in which the layers alternate in position A, B, A, B, and so on is called hexagonal close packed, or HCP. In the next set of videos, we will look at exactly why it's called hexagonal close packed, but for now, it's important to recognize that you are expected to know this point. A, B, A, B structures are called HCP, or hexagonal close packed. Let's step back and see what happens if we choose the other type of triangular hole, the one that is directly over a hole in layer 1. I am coloring the spheres in this third layer yellow, a different color from the other layers, because this layer is in a different position from both the first and the second layers. Let's fill that layer in now, and let's rotate it so we can see it from a different angle. Again, we can fill in layers above and below and create a three-dimensional solid using this ordering of layers. Close-packed structures comprised of layers alternating in positions A, B, C, A, B, C, and so forth are called cubic close-packed, or CCP. Again, in a following video, we'll look at exactly why it is given this label, but for now it is important that you recognize A, B, C, A, B, C structures are called CCP, or cubic close-packed. In the next video, we will be looking in more depth at HCP and CCP structures. Thank you for watching.